Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Members Only Jimmy Dore live stream. We got special guests with us. Let me say hi. First of all, not having too bad of a hair day. That's the important thing. How are you, fellas? I'm great. I feel great. Yeah, I I just really have a good zest for life. How hi, Aaron? How are you? Can I hear you? I'm I'm good. I'm gonna let Eddie's dog speak for me. That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Now, uh, normally on our members only show, we just dick around and we talk about stuff and have fun, and um, but this time there's something happening. So there's. Uh, I, the Young Turks are pushing this State Department narrative of Syria that um, uh, somehow Aaron Mate is not telling the truth about Syria and the gas attacks. And I just want to tell her. So I just want to start the show with just so you know. So this isn't coming from Aaron Mate. It's not coming from Jimmy Dore. It's not coming from the gray zone. I want everyone to know exactly what's happening in Syria. And Jeffrey Sachs is going to tell you. Now, Jeffrey Sachs is from Columbia University. He got on MSNBC to say this. And I'm pretty sure he's never been invited back. So here, <laughs> what, what, watch, watch this. He's going to tell you what's happening in Syria. Very different than just a war between two countries. This is as convoluted as it gets and could get out of tr control. I don't think people might really conceptualize, maybe even not this president, how out of control this could uh, escalate. It's true, but I think we have to step back and not put this uh, in partisan terms. This is a U.S. mistake that started seven years ago. And I remember the day on, uh, on your show mm -hmm. uh, when uh, President Obama said, Assad must go. Mm -hmm. And I looked at uh, you and Joe and I said, huh, how's he gonna do that? Where's the policy for that? Right. And we know uh, they sent in the CIA to overthrow Assad. The CIA and Saudi Arabia together uh, in covert operations tried to overthrow Assad. It was a disaster. Eventually it brought in both ISIS as a splinter group to the jihadists that went in. It also brought in Russia. So we have been digging deeper and deeper and deeper. What we should do now is get out. Mm -hmm and not continue to throw not have a confrontation with Russia. Seven years has been a disaster under Obama, continuing under Trump. This is what I would call the permanent state. This is uh, the CIA, this is the uh, Pentagon, wanting to keep Iran and Russia out of Syria, but no way to do that. And so we have made a proxy war in Syria. It's killed 500,000 people, displaced 10 million, and I'll say predictably so, because I predicted it seven years ago that there was no way to do this and that it would make a complete chaos. So what I would plead to President Trump is get out, like his instinct told him, He's by the way. Before, yeah. That was his instinct. Yeah. But then all the establishment, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Pentagon, the young everybody said, no, no, that's irresponsible. But his instinct is right. Get out. We've done enough damage, seven years, and now we really risk a confrontation with Russia that is extraordinarily dangerous. Okay, just so, and I'll play you one more thing. It's attractive, but I think we have to understand how this happened. This happened because of us. These 600,000 are not just uh, incidental. We started a war to overthrow a regime. It was covert. It was Timber Sycamore. People can look it up. The CIA operation. Timber Sycamore. Look it up. Together with Saudi Arabia. Still a shrouded in secrecy, which is part of the problem in our country. A major war effort shrouded in secrecy, never debated by Congress, never explained to the American people, signed by President Obama, never explained. And this created chaos. And so just throwing more missiles in right now is not a response. My only concern. We, so there you go. It's, by the way, not to walk away, to go to the U.N. Security Council, as the admiral says, to agree with Russia on a strategy for ending the fight. But ending the fight means that we stop trying to overthrow a government, that we stop trying to support rebels whose 
are committed to overthrowing the government. That is where this war continues, because we to this day back rebels that are trying to overthrow a government contrary to international law, contrary to the UN Charter, contrary to common sense, contrary to practical path. We can't do it. And it's just creating ongoing crisis to the extent of facing an imminent confrontation with Russia. So I. I so there. So uh, let me bring in Aaron and uh, Eddie Pepitone. Now, Aaron, is there anything you want to add to that? I mean, that's pretty. He lays it down. He under, he explains to people that this isn't us intervening to try to help the Syrian people uh, protect themselves from a dictator. This is us creating a war, a dirty war. So I'll let you explain it. Well, there's something really significant about that. It's one of the few times the truth has been allowed onto U.S. corporate TV about Syria. And second of all, it's such a good corrective to all the propaganda we get because because we live in a country where the U.S. media manufactures consent, the range of quote unquote debate is always restricted. So the underlying goal of our foreign policy is always accepted as righteous. The only issue is whether or not we did the right job in pursuing it. So in the case of Syria, the permissible dissent that you're allowed to have on Syria is that Barack Obama did not do enough to overthrow the Syrian government and that Trump made a mistake in not continuing that. That is the allowed dissent you're allowed to have. We didn't go far enough in our efforts to arm sectarian death squads along with Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Turkey and Israel and the UK, and we should have done more. That's the allowed dissent. What Sachs is saying there is that we had no right to do that in the first place, and the results were predictably catastrophic. And that's why you won't hear him being allowed to say that on TV ever again, because he spoke the truth. And by the way, I went to get that video at MSNBC, and it doesn't play. So it's there. (laughs) It's there. But when you click on it, right? Did you click on it, Mark? When you click on it, it just spins and spins and spins. So they won't let you you, they won't let you access that. Luckily, I already had it downloaded the Jimmy Dore video library (laughs) where it's where it's very meticulously indexed. (laughs) Who is is the curator? Who is the curator of the Dore library? Yeah, well, we have it. We have several different 19 year olds. Uh, (laughs) who are working, curating our library. (laughs) So, and the reason why we bring all this up, the reason why I'm bringing this Mm. up is because there's been a lot of bad faith attacks by State Department repeating the Young Turks, right? So the Young Turks have always been for bombing Syria. They were for bombing Libya. They're always for pro-war, right? In fact, when when Trump bombed Syria, Cenk Uygur described it as nerf bombs and said he didn't do enough bombing. Uh... (laughs) I'm not making that up, that he said that. So they've been very pro-war always. And so they've been slandering Aaron Maté, who's been doing great work debunking the Syrian narrative from the State Department. He's he's basically been what Jeffrey Sachs just said. Aaron Maté is doing the work to... to uh, to lay that information down and to register that information in his columns, in his news reports. And he just came back from Syria, right? So now the Young Turks will never go anywhere outside their Culver City office or their apartment. So Aaron Monte is actually <laughs> in Syria and they're in, in Culver City. Never, ever once uh, will they ever do an actual news report. Some are, all the reports secondhand, thirdhand, and it's often repeating State Department and CIA narratives and talking points directly, just like they did when they smeared Julian Assange and like they're doing when they're repeating this bullshit about the gas attacks in Duma. So this all started because this happened. And I, don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, they said uh, Aaron Mate yelled at me. And so oh, Aaron I'm, Mate oh, lied. Oh, 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 Aaron oh, Mate. Oh, everyone cares what Aaron oh, Mate oh, has to say, oh, right? Okay. The guy who denies that Syrian children were killed with chemical attacks. Yeah, yeah. And fuck gets Aaron paid Mate. by the Yeah, fuck you. Anyway, let's move on. Russians. Let's end the freaking pot. I can't. I can't. Okay, see, no, that's what happened. I can't stand. My, I can't stand that guy, and I can't stand the very intentional disinformation they put out there in regard to disgusting dictators around the world. The very people they seem to be working for. To be quite honest with you, let's move on. All right, we're done. Disgusting. Uh, Absolutely disgusting. uh, If Aaron Mate feels really warm in his uh, Russian blanket, he's like, oh, but the Russian government favors me. He should be super proud of that. Way to go, Aaron. You did it. Um, Okay. So uh, that's just straight. Yeah, did you see? You you hadn't seen that, Eddie? That's first time you've seen that. (laughs) 
<laughs> Holy shit. What, what, how does that strike you, Eddie? I just, I'd like to get your raw reaction to that. Well, it, it's like, why, why are they, you know, being so stridently, you know, trying to call out Aaron? I, I, what is their fucking point? Like, what is their viewpoint? I don't get it. Their their view you know? their viewpoint is Aaron Mate's wrong, and uh, was Assad is gassing his own people, and we should bomb them more. Um, that's right. Their, they're that, they're claiming Assad is a bad bad guy, and that Aaron is propping him up somehow. So is what they're correct? doing? What they're doing? Yes, what they're doing, Eddie, is the equivalent of if this was a couple of months before the United States invaded Iraq. They would be doing segments mm. going that Saddam Hussein's a bad guy and anybody saying there isn't WMDs is propping him up and they're working for him and they're getting money from Russia and Saddam. That's what they're doing. So Aramate is debunking the State Department and the military industrial complex BS pro-war narrative, just like Jeffrey Sachs was doing on MSNBC. And they are literally smearing him just like they smeared Julian Assange and they're smearing... Whoa. Yeah. Why didn't they go after Sachs? Like, say, Sachs, you're a piece of shit, you know? Uh, be because uh, Aaron Mate actually uh, debunked... Is Ru in their universe. Yes, he's in their universe, and he debunked Russiagate, too, which made them look like clowns. So Aaron Mate won an award. Uh, he won the Independent Journalist Award, the IF Stone, the Izzy Award, for his meticulous right. debunking of Russiagate. Now, you just saw what they did. They said he's, he's taking money from Russia. Like an independent journalist who won the Independent Journalism Award for debunking Russiagate, they're now doing McCarthy smearing it of him. That's what the Young Turks, and yeah. so they can't take that. So Aaron Mate uh, made fun of Jank on Twitter, and that's the result. So what, uh, what you just uh, saw uh, was uh, the uh, result of them saying he is in bed with uh, gas attack, gas killing children, uh, dictators, and he's being yeah. working for them. And he's also getting paid by the rush. You must have a lot of money. You, you <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy, that's the thing. They're, they're not just smearing me, but they're projecting. Anna Kasparian claims that she's against, that she doesn't like me because I purportedly defend the killing of children. How does Anna Kasparian really feel about the people who are unrepentant child murderers? <laughs> At the Munich Security Conference, which is a event sponsored by NATO governments and the weapons manufacturers who profit off these governments, Anna Kasparian flew there and did a softball fawning interview with Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State, who once said on 60 Minutes that killing hundreds of thousands of Iraqi children is worth it. Not only did Anna Kasparian not express any disgust at this, she didn't even raise it. And she in fact told Albright what an honor it was and how delighted she was to interview her. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Welcome to your MSC. I am delighted to be here and to have a conversation with the former U.S. Secretary of State under Bill Clinton, Madeleine Albright. And Madeleine Albright was actually the first female Secretary of State in the U.S. And I, it is a pleasure to have you here. It's an honor to have a conversation with you. Well, I'm delighted to be interviewed by you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So when she says that I defend child murder, she's projecting. And when Cenk talks about me being paid by Russia and wrapping myself in the warm blanket of Russia, he's projecting too. He's adopting the uh, McCarthyite yeah. smears of the Democratic Party elite that he happens to be paid by. He, you know, is you've talked about, they took $20 million from DNC mega donor Jeffrey Katzenberg. So someone like me, who's not paid by any state, is not paid by any DNC mega donors or oh billionaires. I represent actually what Jenk claims to be doing in his life, which is being a progressive and holding the powerful to account, including the DNC elite. But he's not, he's actually you know taking their money and spewing their talking points. Aaron. So there's Aaron. accordingly there's hostility towards someone who's actually doing what he's pretending to be doing. Aaron, Aaron, what is your number? Everybody's <laughs> got a number. What's your number? <laughs> what is your number? <laughs>
Uh, no, because I'm a comic. <clears throat> you know, I, if someone offered me twenty million, yeah, you know, to on a set say that uh, uh, you know Russia and Assad are killing babies. Well, yeah, yeah. I well, I, <laughs> I would probably take. I I don't know. I don't know. I. I want to. I want to be like. I am so glad I'm on the periphery, and nobody ever offers me big money. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that. I mean that because you wind up like Jenk, who's fat. Look at how fat he is. <laughs> and I know that's not cool to fat shame, but I'm doing it. You know, and I think that that fatness is because of you know that money. And, you know, that's what happens when you're when you sell out, you know, you become a consumer. You know what I mean? I'm not even kidding. Uh, I, I love that you nailed the projection stuff, you know. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, let me just show. So Jenk tweeted this out. So now their new thing is so that the, the uh, Syria had an election May 28th. So 10 days ago. Syria had an election and now they're covering it, right? They're covering it as some kind of trying to dunk on Aaron. And so they're making all these straw man arguments as if Aaron is over in Syria propping up Assad. Instead of what he's doing is what Jeffrey X. Sachs was doing, was debunking a pro-war interventionist narrative so that we don't have to go to war with another uh, country in the Middle East, right? So he wasn't, just like people who said there weren't WMDs in Iraq, weren't propping up Saddam Hussein, Aaron Maté is not propping up, propping up uh, Assad. Uh, that he's debunking the pro-war narrative. And so they want to conflate that and switch, flip, and pretend that Aaron is somehow a sycophant to a, a, uh, a toady to Assad. They're trying to pretend, in the words of our New York favorite New York columnist, that he's a toady, and that's not. So there he is doing this. Supporting dictators is not a progressive. So the pre pretending that Aaron Monte debunking a pro nor narrative is now supporting dictators. That's as, again, that Ooh, would be like saying if right, you debunk WMDs, right. you're supporting. So that's the George Bush shit. And that's why Jenk Uger is a Republican. He says former, but he was a pro-war Republican. <laughs> he did pro-war Iraq rallies when he was in college, just like Dave Weigel from the Washington Post. They both did pro-war rallies when they were in college. Jenk did? Yes. So that that's wow. so that's what his core is. So his flex is always going to be conservative. His flex is always pro-war. His flex is always more bombing. His flex is always McCarthyism. Jenk is a right winger at his heart. He's all, but before I, you know, before I became, I got to the Young Turks, they were pro cop. <laughs> they were pro cop at the Young Turks. That's how fucking conservative right wing how the Young did they Turks get a are. Progressive reputation that they still have. Uh, they don't have it anymore. It's the, the, they don't have it over anymore, situation. Yeah. Well, they used to get thirty thousand live stream viewers, and now they get about three thousand. They get about half, right. or, or what the Jimmy Dore show gets, high in my garage. Nice. And so, and they got twenty four million <laughs> DNs. It, you always, I love that you always. I am high in my. Garage. That's right. That's right. Yet I tell the fucking truth. Imagine if I wasn't high. So here, I'm going to show you some, here's some of their coverage of this, and then we'll go through it with Aaron, right? Okay. Syria just held its presidential election, and unsurprisingly, Bashar al-Assad won his fourth term, which means he'll be serving another seven years as the president of the country. And it, what I'm sure was a totally free and fair election. I'm sure that there was no funny business going on, nothing undemocratic taking place. Now, of course, the truth is very different from that. I'm being incredibly sarcastic. I'm being critically. <laughs> I have to tell you, I have to tell you what I'm being sarcastic because I normally come across as a robot. <laughs> Of course, I'm being incredibly sarcastic. No one can tell because I'm not funny or have a sense of humor or even a personality that's likable. But before I get to the details on what went down during this election, I want to be abundantly clear abundantly. that as an individual who identifies on the left, you can both be against United States intervention 
or the United States meddling in these types of situations and also acknowledge when undemocratic behavior takes place. And you can also repeat State Department <laughs> pro-war talking points and also do a video about their election. You can you can validate the gas attack bullshit narrative, smear independent journalists who are on the job on the ground in Syria debunking this. And you could also do this story I'm going to do about the election. You could also be the worst type of horrible human being pretending to be a news journalist and smearing actual journalists while propping up the State Department's narrative of pro-war. While I also going to do this thing about the uh, election they just had and pretend that Aaron Maté is pushing pro-Assad narrative. That's what they're that's what they're doing. OK, so here we go certainly is the case in the country of Syria. And I want to make the case for that. I want to provide the receipts and you can judge for yourself. So, the, Aaron, she's going to provide you the receipts. <laughs> she's going to provide you the receipts. Uh, first, let's start off with the fact that not everyone <laughs> was allowed to vote in this presidential election. So uh, Deutsche Welle uh, reports that not everyone within the country is allowed to vote. The country is home the to German the world's State largest broadcaster. number of displaced. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say, go ahead, uh, Aaron. So now she's starting by citing the German state broadcaster, Germany, which is an ally of the U.S. in dirty war. So here she is talking about fighting authoritarianism and state propaganda. And her first source is the state, the state broadcaster of a country that joined with the U.S. and its allies and still doing it in the dirty war in Syria and, imp and helping impose the murderous sanctions on Syria that are preventing Syria from importing basics like so fuel. She, so she's ba so what she does to to tell to to give you the receipts mm -hmm. she goes to an article written by a state journalist from Germany who's also pro war and pro the proxy war in Syria. That's who she's quoting. Yes. Yes. That's so when you're going to get your receipts from the Young Turks, they're going to get it from the CIA. They're going to get it from Luke Harding. They're going to get it from the DNC or now they're going to get it from a state journalist over in Germany. OK, that's their that's their first receipt. People with millions of domestic refugees in the northwestern province of Idlib and in areas in the east that are outside of the government's control, run by Turkish troops or their proxy militia. Um, and they're the ones who have the say. Now, the Kurdish majority in northern Syria is also excluded from being able to vote in this election. So I'm guessing that played a pretty significant role in the fact that Bashar al-Assad won 95.1 percent of the vote. Yeah, can I stop that, Jimmy? The, the Kurds are now a proxy of the US. They're living basically under US military protection. And the Kurds keep making deals with the US, even though the US sells out the Kurds mm -hmm. constantly. And the US has, is basically using the Kurds to keep Syria from taking back all of its territory. From Because right now, the US controls one third of Syria, including where the Kurds live. So basically, the uh, US is using the Kurds is basically a proxy force to keep Syria divided and poor. So, and the Kurds and the Kurds under U.S. pressure rejected any effort to be a part of Syria as a whole, and rejected accordingly any part to be part. Rejected any participation in these elections, and that's the receipts that she happens to be forgetting because, of course, she doesn't even know them. I mean, I don't. She's not leaving stuff out. She just doesn't know anything, and is going off of whatever she reads in state media, and later on in the segment, she cites a neocon think tanker in the Washington Post. Um, you can be against the United States meddling and against undemocratic behavior, and I might tell you to go fuck off. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what, what people, what she, again, an, another thing that they're leaving out, and she probably doesn't know it, is that the United States is occupying one-third of Syria still. Their oil fields, and that's where the Kurds are, and so they're, they're leaving all this out. We, we, we funded a dirty war. We gave weapons and money to al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, ISIS, uh, Saudi Arabia, and the United States to overthrow uh, a government. And they've been wanting to overthrow this uh, Assad since at least 2006. So this has got nothing to do with gas attacks. It's got nothing to do with anything. This is just another Iraq, another Libya, and now they want to do Syria. Oh, I wish I had that video of uh, Wes Clark uh, saying about all those. Could you find that video? Uh and so they're not, so the Young Turks aren't going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that the the United States is occupying one third of the country still. But that, that, yeah, 
Yeah, they're not. They don't mention that at all in the segment. And I looked it up, Jimmy, to see have they done a single segment on the U.S. sanctions in Syria that explicitly target its reconstruction and that are just choking Syrians as designed as these sanctions always do? No, they haven't done a single segment. While meanwhile, she's saying there that she's opposed to U.S. intervention. Yes. So basically, I'm gonna. So she's gonna claim that she's opposed to U.S. intervention while not telling people the most minimal facts about it and also <laughs> parroting all the State Department talking points that are used to justify U.S. intervention. That's the anti-interventionism of the young Turks. And by the way, look, when it comes to ISIS and al-Qaeda, there's no doubt that uh, the reason al-Qaeda right now has control of a province in Syria called Idlib is because directly of U.S. weapons. Didn't ship directly to them, but the fighters who it went to worked hand in hand with al-Qaeda. And those who didn't work hand in hand with Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda just took it from them immediately. So US anti-tank weapons were instrumental in why Al Qaeda now controls Idlib. And that's why Brett McGurk, who's a top official in the Biden administration, he's called Idlib the largest Al Qaeda safe haven since 9-11. And that's context and receipts that happen to be omitted from this segment. And when it comes to ISIS, there wasn't direct US support to ISIS, but the same thing, ISIS took advantage of the dirty war. The US watched as ISIS crossed the desert to take cities like Raqqa and Palmyra. There's no way the US didn't see them. They had every part of Syria under surveillance. And they watched as ISIS crossed over from Iraq across the desert and took Raqqa uh, and made it into a just a hellhole. And so that's a direct US uh, creation, really. And ISIS also took weapons that were given to the quote unquote rebels in Syria. So that is what the U.S. did in Syria. And that's the receipts missing <laughs> from this pretend segment. The, yeah, this Why? is this is one large this is one long straw man argument that TYT is making. The Anna Kasparian is making here. Go ahead, Eddie. You want to say something? I just wanted to ask, why would the U.S. let ISIS take Raqqa be like that? Well, look, there's a great clip of John Kerry where he admits the reason. He says that we were watching as ISIS was approaching Damascus and we thought that Assad was threatened. And we thought that, that would put him in a position to negotiate, to basically negotiate his exit from power. So what Kerry was saying, and this was in a leaked recording uh, made with some a activists from the Syrian opposition, that basically the US was willing to leverage the advance of ISIS and risk ISIS taking over Damascus if that could put pressure on Assad and force him to leave. So basically leveraging ISIS to achieve regime change. And then Kerry says, that's the reason why Russia intervened in Syria. He says Russia intervened because they didn't want a Daesh government, Daesh being ISIS. So that right there, imagine that, imagine not wanting an ISIS government. What a crazy reason. That was Russia's motive, he says, to intervene. And of course, you know, this is never presented to us in the media. By the way, when this leak came out from Kerry, the New York Times reported the fact of this leak conversation, but didn't include that part of it. Oh. That part of it, that part of it is up on a website called Mondo Weiss, which is a progressive uh, website covering Israel Palestine. Okay, that that site accurately reported what Kerry said. New York Times left out the most explosive part of his leak comment, which is that the U.S. was watching and sitting back as ISIS was about to take Damascus. Uh, and again, this is all context that the Young Turks don't even have any idea about. Uh, they have they they wouldn't they certainly wouldn't call you and ask you to tell them what's going on. Nor would they talk to any other reporters who have been on the ground there. Vanessa Beasley or um, now I'm blanking on the other young lady I had on the show. Uh, we, I've had plenty of, there's, there's, there's been a handful of people that have been on the ground in Syria. You're one of them and they won't talk to any of them <laughs> and they won't ever, and they won't, they won't even quote Robert Fisk's reporting, which I'm sure they're not even aware of it. They're, I'm sure Anna Kasparian has no idea who Robert Fisk even is. Yeah. And there's plenty of people who don't like the Syrian government, but still didn't want to see their country destroyed. Plenty of Syrians who feel that way. It's those Syrians who are never quoted in the US media. The only only ones who get elevated are those who supported the dirty war for their own reasons, because they basically wanted to take over the country from the Ba'ath Party, which has controlled Syria for a long time. But all the Syrians really subjected to this war, they're never quoted, they're never erased. 
they're 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 always erased. Uh, for example, you know, there's the there's an aunt of one. There's a picture, a very famous a picture of a boy who washed up dead on the shores mm. of Greece. Yes, and his aunt lives in Canada now. And one time she was allowed on MSNBC, and she said that you know. We oppose the terrorists who you tried to impose on our country, like Al Qaeda, and you know you put us through hell. And of course, that was the last time she was allowed on MSNBC, and she'll never be allowed anywhere because even Morning a, Joe, even Morning Joe, <laughs> even Morning Joe, she's a Syrian whose voice doesn't count. <laughs> All right, let's see if there's more. What more today? This, this garbage report from TYT. You know, try to persuade the American people to support intervention by pointing out uh, either a humanitarian crisis or, you know, bad behavior by a dictatorial leader and all sorts of issues. But the fact of the matter is, we have our problems within our own borders. We have our problems at our southern border where we uh, obviously are not treating people in a humane way. Uh, we're even in the, in the Biden administration after he had campaigned about treating migrants with, um, you know, in a humane way, obviously we've seen images of the children still locked in in these detention facilities that, of course, are not uh, treated. What the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> what well, I, I was watching, I have no idea what the fuck this has to do with the Syrian story. She's just she's just talking. She's just throwing shit out that have nothing to do with anything. Do you know what this has to do with what you're talking about? I think she's trying to establish. I think she's trying to pretend that she's not a right wing propagandist, even though her segment is right wing propaganda. So she's trying to say, oh, yeah, we, you know, I know we have problems here at home here, too. So she's trying to, like, you know, cater to like a leftist audience by pretending that she's willing to be critical of her own government as well, uh, even as she advances the propaganda of her government about a demonized country that's just been through a 10 year dirty war that we helped cause. And they and sh and again, uh, she never mentions the sanctions that the United States, the crippling sanctions that we have that are stopping mm -hmm. that country from rebuilding after the war is over. And, you know, we allowed Nazi Germany to rebuild after the war was over. You always have to let a country rebuild after the war is over. And the United States is not doing that. We are sanctioning them. Doesn't mention that either. That should that should also be a war crime that they're doing that. They, should, they, they don't mention that. The Young Turks mentions nothing. They give you and, no. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy, what are, the, what are the odds that she actually knows that the sanctions even exist? She, what are I, the odds I, of that? she doesn't. I bet she doesn't even know that they're <laughs> sanctions, just like she doesn't know about anything. She doesn't know about Timber Sycamore. And if she no. does and doesn't mention it, then that's even worse. Yeah. Timber Sycamore is what? Is the program was the was the program that the CIA oh. instituted to arm rebels, people, Al Qaeda and Al Nusra, to go in and try to overthrow Assad. That was oh, called okay. Timber the, Sycamore. The beginning of this whole. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. people. It's one of the most expensive programs in the CIA's history. How, and how really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. The budget was. It's, at Do you one have point, the receipt? <laughs> well, the, the, according to the Washington Post, the budget was at one point one billion dollars a year. It represented approximately one dollar out of every fifteen dollars spent by the CIA, and a large part of it too. The money was funded by Saudi Arabia, which was the playbook established in the nineteen eighties, when to avoid congressional oversight. The Reagan administration got Saudi Arabia to pay for the dirty war in Nicaragua and also the proxy war in Afghanistan supporting the, the, the Mujahideen. Um, and so they brushed off that playbook for Syria and they brushed off the playbook of getting dupes in the media to do their propaganda for them. It's the exact same thing. So what I think this is. Aaron, what, wow. the, what the Young Turks are doing with you and Syria right now, and when they do a, a report like this, uh, which is, again, pro-war propaganda, uh, they're signaling not to their DNC donors, but to their Bellingcat donors. Do you know what I mean? Like they're 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 looking to get more money. They're they're going bankrupt. The Young Turks have no viewership. Are they, they have they have they have fifty managers and supervisors that work for that company. I'm I'm exaggerating, but they I, I you know are it's just, they hiring? 
<laughs> no, they're not. They're spiraling downward. And so I think they're actually signaling to, you know, the State Department. Uh, Bellingcat gets funded by the NED. I bet they're looking for that kind of funding right now, That uh, the National Endowment for Democracy. I'm sure the, the Young Turks are looking for any revenue source they can get right now. They've turned into televangelists trying to squeeze their own viewership. They told their own viewership last December, send us money and we'll get you the $2,000 checks. That's what they were telling people in their fundraising email. Emails. I got that sent directly to my email. That's how I know this. So uh, they're, 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 they're broke. They're, out of, they're spiraling out of control. They're cutting everyone's salaries. They're letting people go. And uh, they're still doing this. So this is, a, this is them. They, they're trying to dunk on Aaron. I, I, all I have to do is report on Syria correctly, and everyone will forget all the shit they did. But they won't do it. Just like Jenk will never admit that Russiagate was the dumbest conspiracy theory in the history of our country that he pushed uh, uh, at the top of his lungs, and so did Air, uh, Anna. They'll never admit that. They'll never admit they smeared Julian Assange. They won't retract that video. They won't apologize for it. It's still up, and uh, they're still doing this. They're still conflating. They're still doing State Department uh, talking points on a country that, that we were trying to overthrow for eight years. Uh, so here- and, and I, Jimmy, I think, you know, they know it, too. They, they know so... I mean, just watching this woman, what, what is it? Anna, right? Yeah. She just, she reeks of guilt. Yes. There was a lot of guilt in my family. And I can spot it on someone. <laughs> you know, she reminds me of my aunt who used to accuse me of stealing from her purse, which occasionally I did, but she <laughs> would always. <laughs> no, I, you know what I, you know what I want to say is just, it's so disheartening when, you know, the, and you used the term before that Chomsky talked about manufacturing consent. I mean, the layers the layers of this manufacturing right down to the, you know, the young Turks who come, you know, who masquerade as pro- progressives. I mean, it's so hard it, 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 unless people somehow get hipped to you guys, you know, to find the, the, the truth, you know, in Greenwald and gray zone and all that stuff. I mean, I, it's just so disheartening that this is not common knowledge whenever I, I see you guys talking. Jimmy, I don't know if you have more clips to play from this segment. Yes. Because there's other parts of it that are just ridiculous and offensive. Okay, let me play. Oh, I, have I have a few. To say about what I said, Aaron? Let's just move <laughs> along. <laughs> I pray, Eddie, I appreciate it. Eddie, I thank you. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm kidding. I get it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, if you can see if you can turn up your volume a, a little bit. I don't know if you yes, have it. I will. It was. A, it's it a little, still a little soft. But anyway, here we, and I love to hear your voice. That's the whole thing. <laughs> them in in a humane way. Uh, they're in tight, packed quarters. They're not being given uh, the about? just bare necessities of of living in a decent situation as they're awaiting uh, the government's decision on whether or not they'll be granted asylum. Now, with that said, though, there were other details to this election, and and the reason why I'm doing this story is because I do think it's important to set the record straight. I do think it's important for people to know what happened in this election and what the reality is in. Syria. <laughs> Here's what happened. She got humiliated when she went off on a McCarthyite tirade along with Jenk about me. And so what she's doing is doubling down by trying to create the straw man that uh, You're people propping up Assad. Criticize the dirty war are somehow all supporters of Assad. And she's following the playbook, which happens with every demonized country targeted by regime change, where an entire state is reduced to a cartoonish portrayal of one individual. So, you know, when the U.S. are trying to invade Iraq, you couldn't tell people, yeah, we're going to bomb their infrastructure, their sanitation facilities. We're going to uh, kill their children. You can't say that. Instead, you have to say, we're going to stop this genocidal madman who mm-hmm. is going to attack, attack us with nuclear weapons unless we stop him. With Qaddafi, with Libya, uh, you can't say we're going to arm uh, Salafi death squads 
and uh, bomb um, people and reduce Syria, uh, reduce Libya to ruins and reinstate slavery to Libya. We have to say is that we have to go in because this madman is giving Viagra to his troops and they're committing mass rapes. And we have to stop a massacre in Benghazi, all of which was propaganda. So same thing with Syria, too. Everything is made about this cartoonish portrayal of Assad, who in reality is just a figurehead at the top of an entrenched party system called the Ba'ath Party, who have ruled Syria for a very long time. They have plenty of problems. Talk to any Syrian. They will give you a long list of the problems with them. But most Syrians didn't want to have their country destroyed by a brutal, dirty war and didn't want to be ruled over by the sectarian death squads like Jaysh al-Islam, funded by Saudi Arabia, who paraded people uh, in Duma around in cages because they were from, from the Shiite sect. Didn't want to be ruled by ISIS, who, as John Kerry said, we're going to take over Damascus. And didn't want to be ruled by Al-Qaeda, who now rule the, uh, the northern province of Idlib. So that is like, that's the uh, context that is missing from, by the way, this discussion of this election as well. Because look, I was there, I saw the election. And I'm not going to sit here and call it a democratic election. The government ultimately approved the candidates. It's an authoritarian system. Friends of mine in Damascus, they speculated to me that there was some ballot stuffing. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not an election monitor. But to dismiss this election fully as a sham and to talk about le the legitimacy of elections, first of all, no state election really is legitimate. All states are ruled by systems of power. Is our election legitimate where our choices are two corporate owned parties and the right. one potential exactly. dissenter to the establishment is undermined as Bernie Sanders was, especially in 2016? The question is, you know, does the government have some popular support? And you go to Syria and the answer is yes. I'm not gonna deny that. Everywhere people, I saw support for the government and you can't stage that. There's no way to stage that. Uh, and the support is there because people saw that the state didn't collapse, and the state liberated all these towns from the rule of these jihadi contras who the U.S. armed. And by the way, what also gets erased from all this is that before the war, Syria, although it was a police state, and it is, it still is, Syria also was one of the most stable countries in the region. According to all the major international bodies, Syria had a, uh, it had one of the uh, highest standards of living in the region. Um, according to the World Health Organization, it had, quote, one of the best developed healthcare systems in the Arab world, offering, quote, universal free health care for all its citizens. Um, the uh, Syrian economy, according to the UN, was one of the best performing in the region. And because it, its agriculture sector was under state control, it enjoyed uh, food production that was at a high level and affordable for all of its citizens. Now, all of that uh, manufacturing and production base is destroyed by a war that that left the country in ruins. And now people are starving. And when they try to get food, it's made even harder by U.S. sanctions that prevent people from accessing their own wheat and accessing all the basics that you need to live. That's the real problem now. And what's funny, the irony of people like the Young Turks claiming they're uh, opposed to authoritarianism in Syria, there's really two regimes in Syria right now. And if we really care about authoritarianism in Syria and the well-being of the, of, the, of the Syrian people, one of those regimes happens to be the one inflicting far more suffering, and it's the one that we can do, that we can do something about. It's the U.S. regime that has said, we're the dictators of your country, we're going to own one-third of your country by occupying it, and the rest of you we're going to prevent from reconstruction via our sanctions. That's the authoritarian regime that we can actually stop. Exactly. But to a place like the Young Turks, they're, they so internalized the dictatorship of the U.S. around the world and on poor countries like Syria, that it doesn't even occur to them to acknowledge it. Well said. All right, let's see what else. Well, I yeah. Go ahead, and Eddie. I think I think that uh, you guys have eviscerated the Young Turks on this show, and um, I think we can move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's watch. I know they more. went after Aaron, but yeah. man, you guys have you know dissected their bullshit. Well, uh, Roger yeah, Waters, amazing. I don't know if you saw the video. I love him. I love Roger Waters. Me too. I love Roger Waters. And he called out the Young Turks also. I don't know if you saw that video making the way around. Did you see that? I did. Okay, that was great. Okay, so let's let's play some more of their bullshit here. Well, one of the most, um, I think, cruel parts of this election is that you saw Bashar al-Assad voting 
in Douma, mm -hmm. which is a suburb of Damascus, which was the site of a chemical attack that has been contested by himself, by a lot of state actors and proxies, including Russia, saying, no, 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 a hundred and over a hundred civilians did not die in that attack. They staged the attack on themselves. So just imagine having suffered a chemical attack, losing relatives. So okay. Yeah. They're doing it again. They're, that, that, that's that, they're, that's a CIA bullshit, pro-war, garbage narrative about this. Go ahead, Aaron, debunk it. First of all, nobody says that the civilians who were killed in Duma, who were filmed in Duma, staged the attack on themselves. No one said that. The point that. is, is that somebody killed those people. The people who filmed the video claimed it was in a chemical attack. But then the OPCW, the world's top chemical weapons watchdog, went to Duma and investigated. And they wrote a report saying that there was no evidence of a chemical weapons attack. What happened next, we all know now, that report was, first of all, their superiors tried to doctor it, take out all the evidence pointing to there not being a chemical attack and try to falsely claim that Syria was guilty of a chemical attack. When that was thwarted, that report was simply kept from the public for good. And the inspectors who went to Duma were taken off of the case and the OPCW put out a report that falsely blamed Syria for a chemical attack in Duma. And we know all this because of all the leaks that have come out and the brave whistleblowers who exposed it. Something which um, Francesca, who's speaking here, completely omitted from her narrative and claiming that it was Russia who contested this. No, it was the <laughs> own inspectors of the uh, wow. world's top chemical weapons watchdog. And that's something, of course, that has never appeared on the Young Turks because they're more interested in covering up for a war crime and not finding out who really killed these people than they are in doing something that undermines the pro-war US narrative. The, the, uh, uh, which occurred, by the way, under Donald Trump. So they always talk about how they're opposed yes. to Trump. Here they are carrying water for Donald Trump's uh, airstrikes on Syria and for his government's talking points. Well, so that's what this is. They got embarrassed because they were pro-bombing Syria when Trump bombed Syria. Uh, twice. They were for it. And uh, Jenk Jen wanted him to bomb more. The Young Turks wanted them to bomb more. So this idea that the Young Turks are somehow anti-interventionists is just 100% garbage. They've always been for more war. Always. Uh, and even in 2014, when Barack Obama wanted to bomb Syria, I, me and Steve-O were the only ones against it at the Young Turks. They're all for They're all crazy right-wing fucking war, war-mongering maniacs over there, and they, they love it. And so they were for So that's why they have to keep doing this, because they can't admit they were wrong when they were for Trump bombing Syria. And so, all right, here we go. There's more. I'm starting to think they're not good people. I'm starting <laughs> to think. And then having the autocrat vote in a so-called pretend democratic election in the very town that your relatives or you died in. I mean, I don't know how more on the no So this so what this is is in the run up to the first Iraq war, they had someone like this testify in front of Congress that the Iraqi soldiers were taking babies out of incubators and throwing them on the ground and letting them die. And after they did that, the uh, public support for the Iraq war went went through the roof that's what she's doing she's she's doing that exact she's making up just a made-up story and she's repeating it as it's true that it sounds horrible and it would tug at your heartstrings if it was true and then you'd be for war but it's not true and that just like the the, the babe them the soldiers taking the babies out of incubators was completely made up and we went to war anyway here she is repeating that unbelievable bullshit lie go ahead aaron well and just look if you are not willing to acknowledge the OPCW cover-up, which investigated this very thing. And again, I don't want to actually presume that they even know about it. Damn. It's quite possible that they're, they don't know anything about Syria. So it's quite possible they've missed this story too, even though it's by now it's gotten a lot of attention now, at least in progressive circles. But if you are not willing to acknowledge the OPCW cover-up, what are you really saying? If the top chemical weapons inspectors in the world found no evidence of a chemical weapons attack in Duma, and that was suppressed. That means that these people filmed in those videos died some other way. So what you're saying is, you're actually not interested in finding out how these people died. You wanna cover up for the real murderers by whitewashing the OPCW cover up. You're saying that we don't wanna actually find out how these people really died. And again, at the time, the town of Duma was controlled by Jaysh al-Islam, a fanatic Salafi death squad armed and funded by Saudi Arabia, which as I said before, would take Shia residents, parade them around in cages, 
as people told me personally, would take hostages, prisoners, and force them to help dig tunnels. Tunnels that I toured, by the way. Underneath Duma, there's a massive network of tunnels built real, with real sophistication. A lot of money went into these tunnels, you know, reinforced with like strong steel. You can drive military vehicles through these tunnels. And they were used to move weapons, weapons that were used to shell Damascus because that was what was under control of the Syrian government. And so what you're basically saying by denying the OPCW cover-up and spouting this implausible line about Duma, which by the way, even if the OPCW cover-up, even if it never happened, there was enough open source evidence to show what, that this was staged, like Robert Fisk, you mentioned, Jimmy, he went to the hospital where they filmed people being hosed down and the doctors told him that was staged. And the boy in the video, the key boy in the video told them that it was staged as well, basically, that there was no chemical attack. All that, all those victims get ignored by people who claim to care about the victims and a cover-up of the actual investigation also gets ignored, which says that anybody spouting this line it doesn't care how the people actually died. They want to, they actually want to spout propaganda to justify more people dying in Syria, because that's what these chemical weapons allegations are for. They're to justify bombing of Syria, as was the case with Duma in April 2018, the U.S., Britain, and France bombed Syria, and they're to justify now more sanctions on Syria that kill Syrian kids. So these would be considered conspiracy theorists anyplace else. That she would be considered a conspiracy theorist uh, with absolutely no basis in fact, and it's true. Uh, that's exactly yeah. what they are. Uh, yes. You can because, get way, when it comes. Well, one more quick point. By the way, you know, even without all the evidence, just the just think about the scenario here. Duma was about to, when Syria was accused of this chemical attack. Duma was about to be retaken by the Syrian government. So for them to commit a chemical attack, which only hits civilians if it were true. That would mean that the Syrian government on the verge of retaking a city where Jaysh al-Islam and its allies have been bombing Damascus relentlessly with mortars. On the verge of retaking it and finally uh, winning this battle, they would do the one thing that they knew would trigger a US military strike, which is a chemical attack. So like put that one through like, just like, you know, basic like, Basic logic. Does it make sense that Syria would do the one thing on the brink of victory to help reverse that victory and invite uh, military strikes in their country? It's just so stupid. But these dupes who pretend to be journalists not only promote it, but then avoid all the evidence that undermines it, including the OPCW's own inspectors. It's, it's just such a joke. Well, let, let's hear some more of their comedy. To just speaking to how cruel this administration, this regime is, um, and I do want to say, you know, the the reporter gave some really good context. Yes, this is about legitimizing him for the future, and yes, this is about rebuilding Syria. It needs to be rebuilt, mm -hmm. and for sure, Russia is looking to increase its presence. You know. The Syrian civil war was a proxy war, right? It was a US proxy, Gulf states proxy. You know, wow. everyone and their mother had a little piece of the Syrian civil war at the expense of the Syrian civilians themselves. So as we look towards reconstruction, you're like, Man, is there what is the role of internationalism right now? What is the role we want the United States to play? For sure, we are against intervention. We're against imperialism. No, but what not. is the role? How can we, you know, strengthen the international community so that, you know, we can actually, you know, sideline dictators and promote people who would We want a sideline dictator. We're anti-interventionists, <laughs> but we want to, you know, sideline dictators. <laughs> you mean Jimmy, we want to over we're against intervention, but we want to overthrow governments in other countries. But I don't want to intervene. <laughs> this is what is so stupid about that comment. She's calling for a greater role for the international community in helping to reconstruct Syria. And she's wondering, how are we gonna do it? She doesn't know that the international community has a major role right now in Syria. It's imposing murderous sanctions yes. that are preventing Syria from rebuilding. And she's not aware of that. So in her mind, the international community needs to play a bigger role in Syria. And when right now its actual role is preventing I Syria's know. reconstruction because the US is bullying everyone into not letting Syria rebuild, not letting it import anything that, that can help it rebuild. It's just so it's, does she not know this because she's just brainwashed? 
or is she lazy? Is she an intel? Are they intellectual idiots, or are they invested in this narrative? So the Young Turks are invested in this narrative because they've been pro-war. Cenk Uygur was for bombing Syria in 2014. He was for bombing Syria in 2017, 20. So whenever Trump did it, he wanted him to bomb more. Trump, they were for Libya's intervention in 2018. Cenk said he was still for it. So uh, they're very pro-war. They always have been. This is now to cover their ass because they've been exposed by this show. Wow. as being very <laughs> pro-war and so now they're scrambling trying to find a way to thread that needle pretending that they're anti-imperialist but uh, they're not they totally are and so now they're like look Bashar Assad's doing a sham election and and, and so they're, they're they're trying to conflate things they're trying to and everyone sees what's happening they've been repeating pro-war talking points like they just did like this whole thing is and again just imagine if this was right before the Iraq war if this was a couple of months before the Iraq war and they were doing a story about how Saddam Hussein's a bad guy, he gasses his own people, how he gasses the Kurds, how he, blah, blah, blah. but I don't want intervention, but we want to sideline him. It's like, Jesus Christ, you couldn't be doing the bidding of George Bush more. And so what they were doing is the bidding of Donald Trump, and now they're doing the bidding of the military industrial complex and Joe Biden. And the, yes, that international community uh, is imposing murderous sanctions on Syria right now. We don't need more international community, the Young Turks, you fucking morons. And Jimmy, there's one more funny thing about this, which I, I don't like to bring up where people work because in media, you know, jobs are scarce. You have to earn a living. OK, but this last speaker is a longtime employee of AJ Plus. Uh, Al, Jazeera. A, Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera. Who yeah. who which, go ahead. Which is a state uh, which is a, was funded and owned by the government of Qatar. And Qatar was a major belligerent in the Syria dirty war. That's right. They. As I said, I think before, by a couple of years in, they were bragging that they'd already spent three billion dollars on the Syria dirty war with their money going to even to Al Qaeda, as one former Qatari government official even admitted. OK, so somebody from a state funded uh, broadcaster who is which is one of the belligerents in the Syria dirty war is pretending to be some sort of neutral expert on it. And look, I've worked at Al Jazeera and, you know, I'm not. I'm not knocking people for working there, but I am knocking people who work there and then try to disparage people who criticize the dirty war that the, per, that the government paying, paying their salary was a major part of and not also disclosing that, by the way. And I can look, Al Jazeera, when I worked there, it was cool. I, did, I got to do some good stuff, but the message was very clear. I could not touch Syria. I could not do anything on Syria. And that message was very loud and clear. So. What's funny is, you know, before like that, that clip of like, I'm being accused of being paid by Russia, the Young Turks own people are paid by one of the major belligerents in the dirty war, a Gulf dictatorship. How many elections are there in Qatar? <laughs> does, is John, does John King have a board for Qatar? You know that little board he has you know, <laughs> yeah. saying, oh, this yeah. one flipped, this flipped in Qatar. Uh, all right, let's play some more of this garbage. Who to agree with democracy, right? But in a, again, in a diplomatic way, not in an arming rebels kind of way. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, no, it doesn't. Doesn't. no, it doesn't make sense. No, that doesn't no. make sense. Doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Nothing you're saying makes sense. We're all laughing at you, you fucking children. They're like children. They're like fucking high school kids trying to do a new show. That's what that is. Uh, As more. I said on Twitter, it's uh, it's the most expensive and weirdest after school program <laughs> in the country. <laughs> uh, Here we go. And then one final thing I just want to add about it. There's a lot of, I think, intentional misinformation about what went down in this election. And that's the reason why I felt the need to talk about it. Um, and you should just be on the lookout for the various sources that claim that Bashar al-Assad is wonderful, that the election was totally democratic. For instance, there's the international delegation in Syria to observe elections. And so they were on the ground and the whole purpose of these individuals was to allegedly monitor and then report on how democratic these uh, this election was. And of course, uh, their, the outcome of all this, in their opinion, was that it was wonderful, it was totally democratically done. For instance, uh, they write uh, that we saw nothing to indicate unfairness or coercion in the casting of ballots. During and after the election, we observed huge enthusiasm. It appeared genuine and widespread. For many Syrians, the election represents the imminent ending of the war, the defeat of foreign plots, and hope for the future. 
They also write that uh, for young people, it encapsulates the first period of relative stability they have experienced in their living memory. Many express that they were not simply casting votes for their preferred candidate, but for a sovereign, uh, unified Syria, free from <laughs> imperialist interference. So what is the international delegation to the 2021 Syrian presidential election? Who put this group together? Well, you read into it a little more and you find out that uh, the group that put this uh, whole, you know, international delegation together is um, the Syrian. Wow, she's coming. She's going to get to it any moment now, any minute. In solidarity movement, Syria solidarity, solidarity movement. And they're under this umbrella of something called the Association for Investment in Popular Action Committees. And just to give you an idea of who they are, and you should definitely look into them yourselves. In 2017, the association paid US representative from Ohio, Dennis Kucinich, $20,000 to attend a conference of the pro Assad European Center for the Study of Extremism in London. The association has been described as a pro Assad group. Kucinich then later returned the money after reports of the association's <laughs> support of Assad. So the group that put this international delegation together, the election monitors essentially, is a pro-Assad group. They get sold to, to the American people as just this anti-imperialist group, anti-war group. But you gotta look at the individuals in the steering committee for this group and they're pretty transparently pro-Assad. And so be yeah. careful of that type of um, intentional propaganda <laughs> meant to bolster <laughs> a, a, a Assad as some sort of democratic and popular <laughs> leader in Syria. That's just not the case. So Aaron, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, okay, so a few things. So first of all, this group is a group of peace activists from around the world. Uh, one of them is a South African who was a political prisoner in apartheid South Africa, okay? I, I was lucky to meet him uh, and travel. I, I The reason I got into Syria was I accompanied this group. That's how I got the visa. And they were not vetting the, they're not election monitors as she falsely suggests, like counting the ballots at the polls. They were just there to observe what happened. And everything that they observed in their statement is accurate. There was huge enthusiasm and as they indicated, and it's something that a demented imperialist can't understand. One of the major reasons why there's enthusiasm is not even necessarily support for Assad, although you know there is a lot of support for him, but it's a victory over the fact that their small little country, which has been a pillar of human civilization, you know, it's given so much to the world. Its history goes back, you know, uh, far, far, far before the U.S. in terms of its contributions to the world and and the richness of its society. There's a victory there that they defeated the world's most powerful government in a dirty war that tried to destroy their country. And Assad is the head of that state, is the personification of that. And so what this delegation reported back was that they witnessed that enthusiasm. And, and I saw it there. And you can see it on in the footage, there were big celebrations across Syria. And you just can't stage that, unless they want to argue that all that is staged, which is just ridiculous. Uh, what they're doing is erasing Syrian voices. And they're doing it from their... Um, studios in Los Angeles, and they're attacking actual leftists who go all the way to Syria to try to see for themselves what's happening on the ground. And they're dismissing them as some pro-Assad lobby group, which again, reduces Syria to one person, Assad. What they are is actual, they're actual they're people actually apply the principles that fake uh, journalists like Anna Kasparian claim that they espouse, which is anti-interventionism. What they refuse to do is cater to the talking points that are used to advance in intervention, and that's why they get attacked by people like her. It's just so pathetic. And again, like they're all great people. I met them all. One of them is a South African, a former South African political prisoner. Imagine being a uh, a TV host who never goes anywhere, never does any real journalism, <laughs> constantly gets everything wrong, uh, spouts establishment propaganda. And has and urges people to you know uh, be skeptical of a former South African political prisoner. It's it's just so it's it's like it's it's gross to talk about. So they're just repeating again CIA talking point. Remember when? So uh, this show received uh, uh, an award from a anti interventionist organization, and they tried to say that was pro Assad. So people who are pro, so like. Uh, CNN, MSNBC, Daily Beast, Newsweek, uh, the Young Turks, they'll say that those places are pro-Assad. 
No, those are anti-interventionist peace organizations. And, of course, the military-industrial complex wants you to think a peace organization is pro-Assad. And so, of course, and then she'll just repeat it with that fucking dumb look on her face. That's it. By the way, no, you go ahead, Aaron. That group, by the way, that group that was part of this delegation, it's one of the few American-based organizations that are still allowed to uh, conduct humanitarian operations in Syria because so many others have been shut down by the sanctions. This group has somehow managed to stay in operation and giving services to people in Syria. I met some people who actually work for it and who were helping a widow with two children who previously was living um, on the streets have an apartment. And that was thanks to the support of this group, the Syria Solidarity Movement. So that's who Anna Kasparian is disparaging, you know? Yes, I do know. All right, let's see. The, I have one more clip. Let's see what other stupid shit she says here. Or ever since. So <laughs> this facade of democracy in Syria is a complete and utter joke. And it should be absolutely clear to anyone who's paying any attention to this in a good faith effort to understand what's going on. Okay. I love the authoritative. Yeah. Great tone of it. Yeah. No, no one claims that it's a democracy. No one even says that. It's a straw man. That's a know? straw man. It's all straw men. Nobody's yeah. propping up Assad. Nobody's saying he's a good guy. Nobody cares about, no one gives a, all we care is that we tell the truth about why we're in uh, Syria. And that's because we're trying to overthrow a government illegally at the behest of Saudi Arabia, Arabia, Qatar, and a lot of people say Israel. Uh, Israel's been bombing Syria, right? Uh, Israel bombs Syria all the time. Yeah. And that's one of the ironies of this is leftists who claim to oppose Israel taking its side in the dirty war in Syria. Israel's involvement was so extreme that it even paid the salaries and armed some of the rebels fighting the Assad government. But somehow a bunch of progressives, so-called progressives, have managed to find themselves on the same side of as Israel, Turkey, the Gulf dictatorships, the UK, and their own government. Um. So uh, here's what uh, Dan Cohen tweeted out. Anna Kasparian has a habit of insisting she's not a neocon interventionist before spouting off neocon talking points. Not only on <laughs> Syria, she also swore she's not some Russian fearmonger before speculating to a U.S. general that Trump is controlled by Putin. She literally, this is her game. To, 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 they, to speak out of both sides of their mouths, right? Hey, I'm a progressive, but we can't push for Medicare for all. Hey, I'm a progressive, but we can't push for $15. Hey, I'm, a prog I'm, I'm anti-interventionist, but we should bomb more in Syria. <laughs> Uh, here, watch this. She does it here. Too many cons can you, can you, uh, uh, coincidences. So here, ready? Make it as loud as possible. Don't They're you done. think there are too many cons uh, uh, coincidences when it comes to Donald Trump and, and Russia? And look, I'm not some Russia fear monger, mm. but <laughs> he questions the legitimacy of NATO. Uh, he questions whether or not it was really that big of a deal for uh, Russia to annex Crimea. Um, he was very reluctant to implement those sanctions. He is very complimentary to Vladimir Putin. I mean, it's it's just his. He's very complimentary. Just any kind of bullshit talking point, she's going to repeat, <laughs> and she's going to say. Not some I'm not some Russia fear monger, <laughs> but here's some Russia fear monger. <laughs> <laughs> what gaslighting? What gaslighting? Right. Yes. It's such a joke, Jimmy. It's such a joke that this person is allowed to pose as a progressive. And by the way, it's not just the Young Turks. She also hosts a For show Jacobin. A, a Jacobin. And it's just a joke. It's just a joke. How can you be such a uh, propagandist who attacks actual journalism and leftists and be in a lefty media space? It's such a parody. And honestly, I haven't said much about these people because I didn't think they were significant enough. And But look, you have obviously called up the Young Turks for a long time, and so have my Gray Zone colleagues. Max Blumenthal and Ben Norton did a podcast about them a while ago, and you were right, of course, because it's poisonous for the left, and it's a joke that people like this are existing in in, the, in a lefty media space and pretending to, pretending, to, pretending to be progressive while attacking people who actually do the hard work of journalism. In the case of these people who went to Syria, actually go to see for themselves the impact of a dirty war waged by their government. Uh, here she is. Uh, she she hates you because you deny gas attacks that killed children. Here's a woman who admitted to killing half a million children. <laughs> she admitted it. 
and Anna Kasparian's taking a nice selfie with her, and uh, and she said that it was a great honor to meet her. And a- she killed children for the right reasons. For the right reasons. And so as and then you so you tweeted that out, and her response to this is this LOL, which just goes to show you she has LOL. she has no response to it. And uh, 10 years of war and inexplicably people still listen to Syria experts who've never been to Syria, meaning Anna Kasparian. And then uh, I think this is a great uh, just kind of encapsulates her persona. Everything she is as a journalist, this meme, someone made this and it's there's no sound, but it just kind of it just kind of encapsulates how freaking crazy she is and unhinged and how just spouting. Yeah, she is. This, th- that's it. Don't get me started because yeah. I. Mm. I, I, I gotta tell you, no, I, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah. It's horrible. Ah. What? Um, a, ah. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm so sick and tired of, I, 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 what are you doing? I think Saddam, <laughs> I think we need to go, are you saying that Saddam's a good person? He's a dictator. Why would you say that? He's a goddamn dictator. <laughs> I want to make it abundantly clear. I want to make it abundantly clear. <laughs> That there was staging, there was no stage, it was staged. Susan Stroman, <laughs> Susan Stroman, who staged the producers, was seen. <laughs> She's a great Broadway choreographer. She had, she was seen in Syria for months. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not for intervention, but we should bomb Syria more. <laughs> I'm not for in, for, in, for intervention, but we should figure out a way to sideline these dictators. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Hey, what do we say? Hey, how about we send a shipment of sidelining tow missiles over to El Nusra to see if they could sideline a dictator? What the <laughs> fuck? Uh, well, this has been a fun show. I really appreciate you guys making time. <laughs> I'm... I'm this has been less of a laugh. Love, this has been a fun show. It's very great. It's been less of a laughy. It's been, been less about. of a laughy, laughy kind of a members only. Yeah. We like to play it loose. I like to have a couple cocktails in me and then do a members only. But we had to get to some serious shit. And now I feel like we're going to have to drop this video, even though it's a members only. I feel what? like I feel like we're going to have to oh, drop yeah, it. You know what I mean? I mean, for rap, for everybody. You know, what do you think, Mark? I totally understand. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, you're not dropping this? Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to drop this. Oh, All right. it's gonna stir the shit. And then, we'll, then I'll bring you guys. The Young Turks, Jimmy. The Young Turks, I think, really screwed themselves with this. They were already apparently not doing well, but this just this meltdown just totally exposed them. And instead of apologizing for it, which I gave them, by the way, the opportunity to do, I wrote them a polite email asking for an apology or retraction, no. pointing out, pointing out that everything that everything they said about me was a lie. Didn't even respond. Yeah. They now, they, even now they double down with this pathetic segment about the elections uh, based on a straw man. But they did so take I, they did take down the video of them saying that about you. They took down that video. If you go to there, oh. it was a members only show where the Jenk said you were paid by the Russians and she said you're working with dictators and whatever. They took that video down. So they know they did something wrong and they know they're in trouble. And I'm sure their lawyer told them to do that. And mm. but there's but Jenk is such a narcissistic megalomaniac. He's going to double down and. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he bankrupts the company. I think you should sue them. Are you gonna? People tell me to do it. I haven't. Uh, I haven't given it much thought. It's you know I don't. Uh, I don't. Like I don't believe that. I, no, honestly, I haven't. I, I've had a very busy week. So look, but are you a, a litigious of, person? Now? I'm not a litigious person. No. <laughs> me neither. Me also, neither. there's a lot of people. I've I've never. I've gotten so many messages saying, "Please sue them." But, you know, lawsuits always just like, yeah, they, oh, they're pain in the ass. They could be a time suck. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I'm certainly considering it. I just haven't had the time to give it much thought. Don't be a pussy, Aaron. <laughs> wow. You would really sue him, huh? Do, well, yeah, oh, yeah. fuck. First of all, the lawyer does all the work. You got to show up for a deposition, maybe. But I bet you wouldn't even get that far. They would fucking crumble and offer you a settlement. And part of it would be oh, a public wow. apology. Believe me, their lawyer is not going to fucking want to go to court on this. Wow. That, that's not going to happen. That, that won't be a thing. There, you will not will see a court case. You know, Rachel, Rachel Maddow uh, said apparently some slanderous stuff, and she got out of it by basically arguing. And I think other networks have done this too, maybe Tucker Carlson, that what they say on TV should not be considered 
news or something like that. You know, so <laughs> well, Lawrence, there's, there's, Lawrence uh, there's always a legalistic. That's what I'm worried about. There's always a legalistic uh, way to. Avoid responsibility. Well, Lawrence we'll O'Donnell, at, at, when he uh, slandered Trump, he had to apologize on air. You remember that, right? That's true. When he, but he, yes, that's true. He said that about the true. bankers. He said there was new evidence that Trump yeah. uh, got that's some l some shady loans from the Deutsche Bank or whatever. And there wasn't any of that. That wasn't yeah. there. And then he had to go on the next night and apologize. Yeah, yeah. So wow. that's what I'm looking for. I can't wait to see uh, them apologize <laughs> to you uh, through a lawsuit. That would be fantastic. But they'll probably be out of business before that lawsuit even gets law. I mean, I, I there's no one watching their show. And again, if you go to their uh, their videos at the Young Turks, uh, the only videos that are getting any views are their Trump clickbait videos. Still, they're still six, six months after Trump's out of office, they're still relying on Trump clickbait By videos. The way, is it true that the main don't you think that that these fucking the mainstream media would actually, on one hand, love to have Trump? Of back? course. I mean, they make so much money off of that shit. Show, the ratings are right? in the shitter. The ratings are in the shitter. Right now, right. because they miss they, nobody misses Trump more than fucking CNN yes. and MSNBC. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. And, they and, can't wait for him. Yeah. To come back. That's and they keep trying to bring him back. Well, it's funny how the shit libs all and they all cheer on Donald Trump being banned from Twitter, and then assholes like Jenk Uger go like, "Yes, uh, Trump is banned from Twitter. Now I'm going to come on Twitter and tell you everything he says." Because <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like, yeah. hey, did you hear Trump said this? Did you hear Trump said that? Just, I thought that you guys wanted him banned from Twitter. Why are you repeating everything he says? So anyway, that that's just yeah. what it is. But anyway, uh, I just want to plug. I want to plug that I'm starting a new podcast called What's Up with Chris Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eddie, get closer to the face. Get go closer to the camera. Your pretty face. Get a little closer. Get a little. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. <laughs> That's what Chris Matthews says to female uh, journalists. Get closer to the camera. Get a little closer. Does he really? Yeah, he got yeah, in trouble yeah, for I, doing that. Oh, my he did, God. He did that to Aaron Burnett her first day on TV. I'm pretty sure it was Aaron Burnett. It was somebody She's like him. He's a truth teller. Or it was Nora, Nora O'Donnell. It was somebody. I don't know who it was, but it was somebody. <laughs> He he, oh, he was happy. God. It was the first time we had her on camera. He's like, "Get closer to the camera. Get a little closer." Oh, Get, and she's like, "What do yeah. you do?" She she knew he was creeping, and uh, <laughs> you didn't never you never saw that video. Yeah, that's why I, was, I never did. I never did. I'm gonna to look it up. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, thank you guys. Everybody, check out Eddie Pepitone over at eddiepepitone.com. Right. Yes. Yeah. And Aaron Mate, he's he's working for the Russians now, so I don't know where you would find him. <laughs> Russia.com. Very easy. Russia.com. Russia.com <laughs> slash Aaron Mate slash yeah. warm blanket slash yeah. proud. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as yeah. we always like to say, fuck you, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Mate. All right. Thanks, you guys. I'll see you later. Bye. All Thanks, right. Guys. Bye, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is where I tell you we join our premium program and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.